Our seventh tradition states that AA, every, every AA group ought to be fully self-supporting, declining outside contributions. We will now pass the basket. This is a weekly step meeting. Our format is as follows. The speaker is asked to talk to 25 to 30 minutes on the step of that week, followed by a discussion or questions until 7 p.m. You can find these weekly meetings on our YouTube page, the Conscious Contact Speaker Group of Doylestown. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe, and share. This brings us to the speaker portion of our meeting, October the 10th, 2022, in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, at the Monday night 6 p.m. Stay Alive and Literature, Literature and Step Group of St. Paul Lutheran's Church. Tonight's speaker is Frank. Let's all give Frank a warm welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Let me find, uh, <clears throat> I picked something out uh, earlier. Okay, thanks. I'm Frank. I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Frank. My sobriety date is uh, July 17th, 2015. I have a sponsor named uh, Dave S., and I have a grand sponsor named Ron K. And um, I'm really glad to be here. I'm really grateful to this program for getting me sober. I, um, um, uh, I drank for very many years, well over 40. I'm not proud of that, um, but it's part of my story. And I'm just learning to live now after all these years. So let me um, uh, read a uh, spot that I picked out here. It's from step 12, 12 and 12 page 117. When alcoholism strikes, very unnatural situations may develop which work against marriage partnership and compatible union. If the man is affected, the wife must become the head of the house, often the breadwinner. As matters get worse, the husband becomes a sick and irresponsible child who needs to be looked after and extricated from endless scrapes and impasses. Very gradually and usually without any realization of the fact the wife is forced to become the mother of an erring boy. And if she had a strong maternal instinct to begin with, the situation is exaggerated. Obviously, not much partnership can exist under these conditions. The wife usually goes on doing the best she knows how, but meanwhile, the alcoholic alternatively loves and hates her maternal care. A pattern is thereby established that may take a lot of undoing later. Nevertheless, under the influence of AA's 12 steps, these situations are often set right. Well, um, I, um, I grew up, in, I've lived in New Jersey my whole life, except um, when I was away at school for, for three years. And um, I'm an only child, and my parents were older, and I was extremely shy uh, growing up. And I thought, um, when I got in here, I heard, I said, everybody else had the, uh, the book on how to live life and, and get through situations. And, and I didn't. Almost everybody had an older brother or sister or someone to direct them, and I was just sort of uh, going along, doing the best I can, and, uh, you know, bumping into life and, and things like that. My parents drank socially, um, almost, but they did drank daily. Um, when my father came home from work, my mother didn't work. My father sold uh, real estate. So, um, when he came home from work, they would sit there and have a couple of cocktails and discuss things of the day, and I thought that was the most boring thing anybody could do. You know, they'd rather be outside doing stuff or uh, watching TV if it was uh, winter or something like that. So I didn't pay much attention to it. And um, occasionally I remember if they were pouring, uh, they, drank, they also drank these horrendous looking and smelling things called Manhattans and Martinis. And um, I later came to find out that you're taking wine and pouring it on top of alcohol. I said, I can't, I can't even, I still can't get that concept. But, and, uh, but occasionally there'll be a couple of drops on, on, the, on the kitchen counter when they mix the drinks. And I'm like, oh, this stuff is terrible. But my grandfather came over and he liked beer. And so they give him a, a glass of beer and a big head. And I said, well, that's good. It looks, looks good and it smells good. And he let me sip a little bit. And, you know, that, that I guess that, uh, uh, got me into beer, interested in beer. But that was latent for for many years. When I was in uh, high school, people were um, talking, oh, I'm going to get drunk and go to the dance. I, I, I couldn't get that concept. But 
I guess enough talk. And then I lived in North Jersey at the time. Uh, New Jersey was 21 and New York was 18. So I was only a couple miles away. And everybody, all anybody, anybody wanted to do growing up, I'm going to get my license and go upstate. Because once you cross that line, at 18 you became an adult. You go in a bar and they, they you know, treat you like an adult. And that was my goal in life. And eventually I got there. A little earlier than that, senior year of high school, I said to a fellow who was already 18, um, hey, after, high school, after, after school today, can you run me up to New York State uh, a couple miles and uh, go, go in and buy some beer for me? Which he did. And, and I thought that was the greatest idea. I was doing something I shouldn't have been doing, and that, and that always thrilled me. And because uh, I was a pretty good student, I did what I was told, but I also liked to have a, a, a secret side to me that, you know, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to do what I feel like doing, and then 90% of the time I'll do what other people told me that I should be doing. And uh, I was, uh, you know, family is pretty religious, Roman Catholic, and, you know, every Sunday morning I uh, went to church, and, um, um, and, you know, tried to obey the... The, the, the moral code, and um, uh, so I, I, you know, I wasn't never had a negative thought about God, but it was sort of always just in that building. I only just thought about God when I went to church, and um, then I went to college, and I went to college about 40 miles away from where I lived. So I, I lived away, and uh, as soon as I got there, um, I remembered how I'd gotten someone to go up and get beer for me. And uh, so I went to college for the first week, came home for the first weekend, and I said, wait a second, I can go up and get beer and bring it back during the week, which I did. It got so that my trunk of my car going back to school on Sunday night would be filled with five or six cases of beer because I was buying it for other people. So it just kind of progressed. I mean, everything was, my life was connected to alcohol. And um, eventually it, it got me. Um, I, I met, um, there was a priest uh, who was also a professor at the college, and I got friendly with him. And um, I would see him uh, going down the hallway some nights, and he was bouncing off the walls. And um, I later got friends with him, and I found it, came to find out he would be, just be drinking straight vodka. But be that as it may, but that, you know, I said to myself, oh, I'm not going to drink that. I'm going to drink, but I'm not going to never get like that. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to drink beer. Because if you drink beer, you can't become an alcoholic. I really believe that. I had no idea about alcoholism. So, continued on. Uh, did okay in school, college, then I, I went to law school. And um, uh, continued my partying there. Uh, my nickname was The A. Um, didn't dawn on me that I was drinking more than anybody else. You know, went to a party, I'd be the, I wouldn't leave the keg. Uh, I guess that was the uh, thing. And uh, but I didn't have any too many consequences. I had some hangovers, threw up a few times. But my goal was just to like keep a, like a point. I don't know what the numbers are, but uh, like a point one all of my body uh, the whole time. Just enough not to be blacking out thrown up being too totally outrageous, but just enough to keep the world at bay. And I, and I lived like that for years and years. And of course it kept getting worse. And I didn't want to admit that. Um, there were a few uh, you know, circumstances I got very lucky. I never had a DWI. I should have had a couple. Um, one time I passed uh, on a single lane, uh, one lane each way, a tractor trailer carrying fuel products at night, in a pretty good inebriated state, uh, across the double yellow line, past this truck, really dangerous thing to do. And the cop got me, pulled me over, I had a PPA card in New Jersey. If you have a, uh, like a honorary card from a cop that says you're a good guy, the other cops may honor that. I don't know how prevalent that is, but I got off. Uh, I should have had DWI, maybe it would have woke me up. It probably wouldn't have, because I wasn't ready to stop drinking. Then a very good friend of mine, um, who was always drinking, he was even worse than, worse than I was, and um, he kept trying to get sober, and uh, alcohol ran through his family. His parents were alcoholics, his sisters were all alcoholics, 
and uh, it hit him and then he got sober. It was about 30 years ago. And uh, then he didn't want to hang out with me very much anymore. We got busy. We went our separate ways. Still good friends to this day. Um, but I went on my drinking way and uh, that was it. So I've got two kids. They're uh, 31 and 32. I've been married for thir 36 years. I remember, you know, being loaded and just at that nice uh, edge on my wedding day. And it, it just continued from there. And my wife would say, oh, you had too much. Uh, and I would always say, oh, you, you drive home, okay? And I, I didn't know she'd just do it, but I didn't know how much she really hated that and resented it. And, you know, she, she probably complained, but I, I wasn't listening. And then when she'd really get, you know, on my case about drinking or, you know, you gotta stop this, this is getting crazy. Uh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not hurting anybody. Uh, but I was hurting the family. Uh, I, I was there physically, but I wasn't there emotionally or mentally. Um, whenever you decide, you know, oh, let's go out to dinner tonight. Okay, it wasn't a choice of, you know, like a diner. It always had to be a place that had alcohol, so I could, I could get my few drinks. Uh, with, uh, my wife, you know, would order a glass of wine each. I'd have a second one, sometimes a third. She's not even half done the first one. And then when the, the evening was up, I'd say, oh, let me finish yours. Or even worse, I'd stand up, forget about it. I'd say, i got to go back and get your wine. So I'd run back in the middle of the restaurant. And, you know, enough horror stories. I drank. I drank too much. I drank too long. And it got me. And uh, it's coming up on uh, 10 years now. Uh, I had a cousin who was like a brother to me. And he died of cancer. And I that was 2011. He got sick. And I spent that whole year going to visit him and getting drunk because my cousin was dying. And uh, poor me, poor pity, poor pity me. I, don't, I didn't know all these concepts uh, at that time. I was just in a fog. And, um, you know, if I was bored, I drank. If I was happy, I drank. If I was sad, I drank. Anything. There, there was no excuse. It's just, let's have a beer. And, I, uh, you know, you have a beer. Or sometimes different stuff, or whatever, alcohol. And um, it's just... I couldn't stop. Uh, towards the end, uh, I, 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 you know, I said, oh, I'm not going to have too much, you know, we'll have too much. And uh, big fight with my, uh, yeah, there, no, is that? no, okay. I, I said to myself, you know, I'm drinking too much. At this point, um, I was waking up. I didn't drink in the mornings for the most part, except I was at a, if I went to a sporting event. Um, but when I got up in the morning, I'd plan where I was going to have lunch how we're going to get alcohol at lunch at work. And then on the weekends, of course, I'm home. I can do what I want to do. I, 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 would, I moved up the noon hour till 10.30 in the morning, right after I finished my coffee. And I remember one time it was my garage. I always put it in the garage because I had my little refrigerator near there. And um, she said, she wanted to ask me to get some milk at the store. She said, open the garage door. She said, do you realize it's 10.30 in the morning and you're drinking already? Oh, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then when she started really getting to get on my case, I'd like mutter to my friends or my kids, oh, I gotta get divorced, I can't cope with her. She's so too mean to me. So that was, I was sick. And finally I said, you know, I gotta, I was talking to psychologist, psychiatrist, because I was, I was kind of, I have quite a bit of depression. And, um, uh, but then I said, you know what, I, I, I you know, I don't want to talk to him about all my drinking. I'll talk to a alcohol counselor, social worker. So I looked one of those up. I got got a hold of this fellow, older gentleman, and um, started to see him in or beginning of 2013. And I wanted to, I didn't want to stop drinking, but I just wanted to learn how to control it. Speak, drink like a gentleman. Only have a few each night. And. Um, he started to, you know, ask me to keep track of how many I had, and you know, how many when you really would you get tipsy after? And I said, oh, if I if I keep it below five, I'm I'm pretty good. But once I have five, I may have 20 or 25. And um, finally, one night, I, that I bounced along with him for a few, number of months. Um, I um, uh, had a big fight with my wife one night. I'd gone over to boxed wine. I thought that was a good idea. 
and i just kept going in and you know getting a glass every couple of couple of half hours or stuff like that and i got totally drunk you know started a big fight with my wife and i was so i knew it was i knew i was not going well i knew things were i knew i was going downhill physically mentally uh everything and i went to the psychologist the following morning i said i gotta come and see you i said a big fight with my wife he said, from what you've been telling me the last couple of months, I think, you know, I think you have a problem with alcohol, and I think you need to go to NAA, you need to go to AA to get some help. And there's a good meeting tonight, um, in, uh, on a Friday night in May of 2013. There's a good meeting tonight that you may do you some well, do, do you well. And if I listened, for the first time I listened. Uh, and that, that had to be a, a gift from God, that I listened, because I didn't listen to anybody. And I went to that meeting, and uh, I met a gentleman. Uh, he was only like in his mid 20s, and he already had, and not mid 20s, he was uh, like 30, 40. Yeah, he was 40, and he had 20 years, of, hadn't had a drink in 20 years. I said, "What the hell? What's going on here?" And uh, he took me around for the first uh, month, uh, first week. Uh, he showed me meetings. I, I looked some up. There was one at my church. Uh, there were a couple right in my town. And I went to a meeting every night uh, for the first week or so, maybe even more than that. And I didn't drink for the first 37 days. And then I went to a, and then I started to get, I was on that pink cloud. I went to an 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock a.m. Saturday meeting. I was going to a party with some fr old friends after, after that. And I punched my clock. I went to the meeting. I said, I'm getting better. And then I went and got six pack and started drinking again off to the races so that they bumped along for i had i went to uh Al, i went to uh what do you call it uh, 30 days uh you know um, iop got i drank during that got tossed out of that uh went to another iop got successful had uh, three months sobriety got a pin um i was a little happy thought i had this but i didn't have it i didn't have the function i didn't have the background um I got this thing here. It said uh, in the summer there, I went to a picnic and they gave these out. You know, it's a it's a, it's a pickle. So you, once a pickle, uh, you can't become a cucumber again. I learned all the concepts when I got here and the words. And I, I you know, I, some of them were a little corny, but I said I'll just keep coming because these people are not drinking. They must be. They have something going on here. You know. And um, then they t started talking about God and spirituality, and I said I don't have a problem with God. I didn't, I understand. I appreciate God. I, I, you know, he's granted me a lot of uh, things in my life. Um, actually, I said he's actually kept me safe all these years. I, I really should be grateful. Um, but I, I, I didn't. Uh, it took, it's taken me a while to understand spirituality and, and to, to live in, in God, to live in uh, the outer world, the uh, non, the non uh, day to day life. To to think that there's higher power and there's uh, uh, something more uh, to life than uh, uh, just just surviving. There, there's actually living, and um, so I um, uh, so I, 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 I came to AA for a number of years, um, but I was still you know I'd have different periods of sobriety. And then in the beginning of 2015, I, you know, I was really getting frustrated. People around me were getting frustrated because they, I, I was, you know, get, a, I'd get a week, get two weeks, a month, and then I'd be coming back, constantly raising my hand. And uh, I remember, I went to the, uh, the men's room at one meeting, and the guy with a lot of time said, I he said, I hope your insurance is paid up, because boy, you're out, you're playing with fire. You know, you, 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 you're not going to get back here one of these days. And that kind of shook me up a little bit. And I realized I was kind of playing with for keeps here. I didn't appreciate that. And um, so I um, said, you know, I've got to, I'm going to go to another IOP. I said, that'll give me the tools I need. Spring of 2015. I went to the IOP, and I, um, after about, I guess it was six weeks, after about four weeks, I was dismissed because I was drinking at lunch. You know, because, hey, I'm doing it at night. I can, if I want to have a couple of beers. I didn't get the concept of, you know, stop and get that, you know, the alcohol stopped in you. And when the lady dismissed me, the leader dismissed me, 
she said um, you need a higher level of care you, you need to go away and get away from your family your friends your work all the things you're used to doing um, and you've got to totally change everything and uh, she said here's a list of pl four places that um, my clients uh, have done the best at and one of them was a Karen Foundation outside of Reading, PA. And I'd heard of that before from my psychiatrist who told me the same thing. Well, I, got, I thought I was getting a message from God. Really, I did, um, that I should do this. And I did that. I went away to, uh, in May of 2015. I went to Karen Treatment Center. I said I'd do 28 days. Um, coming close to the end of the 28 days, I said, okay, I'm all set. I'll... Uh, just go out with the, um, the, the, uh, the ward help, you know, the guy, people that help, and um, get my keys, uh, start my car to make sure it's all set to go uh, when I'm getting out of here in a couple of days. And um, the, um, the, the counselors have been saying to me, you know, we have, a, we have an extra care program for another month or so across the street. And I knew a couple of guys that went over there. And, uh, you know, we think you should go there. You had a very long period of drinking, and you got a lot of ingrained habits that you need to break. And I said, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. I mean, these 28 days will be great. And I went out to the car, and I start, tried to start it, and it wouldn't work. I said, I no problem. I got AAA. I called AAA. They came. They couldn't get it going. So I said, tow it to the dealer. I went in, started to call the dealer, and I was calling the dealer, and I said, I think I'm getting a message from God. This, this, you know, I got a message to come here, and I've been praying uh, that it would be God's will. I changed it from "Please get me sober" to um, uh, "Please uh, let it be Your will that I would get sober." And I said, "That's it. Um, I'm staying." And I stayed uh, for the extra 28 days. And so then I. Uh, Guess about a week, a couple of days later, I called up the dealer. I said, "Now, how much is this going to cost me now?" He said, "We can't find anything wrong with your car." I said, "Whoa!" <laughs> uh, of course, me being me, when I went to pick it up, my son drove me there. When he came out to visit me, I was pissed off because they charged me fifty dollars for the uh, uh, to put it on the computer, but whatever. But I was still me. But I was getting better, and I finally uh, I, that was my breakthrough. That I realized that. God was, did for me what I couldn't do for myself, which was to teach me that I can't drink. Uh, I can't put it in me. If I do, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't know what's going to happen, but the good, bad things are, uh, bad things are going to happen. No good things are going to happen. Uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, The, um, this disease is so strong, and um, so I've I've been sober. Um, I, I got back from the uh, uh, the rehab in uh, July 2015. They said, "Here's the day you leave. It's your sobriety date," which I did. I um, moved into an Oxford house, and I stayed there for about two years uh, near my family. But I had to reinvent everything. I had to start going to a lot of meetings. I had to really devote myself to this program, which I did, and, and give up my old ways, and um, stop going, but you know, whatever, stop doing bad things, uh, which I was able to do with the help of this program, and uh, staying close to it. And then uh, I had a sponsor at the time, who was, was a good friend of mine, when I was at uh, the rehab and he was helping my wife and he was you know wanted her to go to Al-Anon and she said oh I'll go to, I'll go to a meeting with you from Al for Al-Anon if it's like 20 miles away and I don't have to speak he said fine he's still waiting for her to go but I can't control that and I thought I could um, I used to think I could control everything that, that was my, my alcoholic ego uh, I used to call it working a problem I would just pick away at it. I was hit it from this angle, hit it from that, this angle. I would just solve a problem that was in my way or somehow get around it. And uh, now, now I don't do that. I don't, I don't think I can solve everything. I, I know I can't. I still have a lot of fear uh, where I could tell you I'm always, less now, but I know when I first met him about 
two, three years ago, I was always calling her, Ron, I can't believe this. I can't, these people are doing this to me, particularly family members. And uh, uh, they're going to do this, and it's going to mess my, I guess, my life up. It's going to mess my retirement up. It's going to, it's going to mess everything up. Um, he just says, uh, let go and let God. Let go and let God. So now I say, let go and let God. And it's actually sinking in now, finally. People are saying weird things uh, in my house. Uh, my wife has got a lot of issues. Um, she uh, has never gone to AA. Now she's, I, I, I don't know, I didn't read the part here. Uh, further on, it talks about uh, the wife getting resentful because you're going to AA all the time and you got all these new friends, you know. And she is. She's exactly that. About a month ago, she said, "Why are you going all the time with these people?" And I'm like, "Wait a second. I thought you wanted me to get sober. It's like I want you to do stuff until I don't want you to do it. But I'm not going to tell you what I don't want you to do." It's, I was going to give her. I was going to say. Uh, I was going to give her some side comments about that the other day. I said, "Yeah, you you change your mind, but you don't tell me, so I can you know bump into the wall, and you get mad at me for bumping into the wall." But you know what? I'm going to just keep bumping into the wall. I'm just going to go in my direction with the help from God. Uh, this has been a, a, a really good year and a tough year at the same time. Um, my son's girlfriend had a baby in April. She just turned six months. I'm so engaged with this baby. Uh, you know, I, I see her every couple of days. I get pictures every day from her. She's so happy, so sweet. And they're not, you know, they're a young couple, they're not getting along. They're fighting with each other. Maybe they're immature or whatever their story is. But uh, I, I, could, I could let that get to me if I was uh, uh, in my old thinking. Um, uh, you know, my, my wife just is just a, is functional. The depression and uh, smoking and just thinking the world's against her. And I have to steal myself and go talk to her. Uh, try not to snap back at her. Uh, just kind of listen and, 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 and show love. Same with my daughter. Uh, she's uh, got a very difficult personality. She's untreated bipolar. Uh, you don't know what you're getting from one minute to the next. And uh, in fact, she was the first one in the family to call me an alcoholic. Um, I guess you'd see enough for, enough for, from me or my friends or her friends and stuff like that. So, I um, and, and and my son is uh, loving, but you know he's doing his own thing. He what he wants to do. Uh, he, you know he doesn't listen. He doesn't take advice. He doesn't, in my opinion, do the right things. But now I just let it go. Okay, that's fine. I try not to be judgmental. I just try and show love. You know, as the gentleman with uh, 42 years in the program who was, I've been close to in my local area. And I remember, you know, years ago when I was telling my kids to drive me crazy, he just says, all you can do is love them. And I didn't understand that concept. And I'm slowly getting to that now. And it's because of this program, and I'm so grateful to it, that I can say, let go and let God, to what I perceive are major things, when they're just everyday life to everybody. But my alcoholism tells me it's important, it's terrible, it's what's going on. No, it's just life. Uh, live life on life's terms. You don't need that alcohol. Thanks, let me share. Please limit your sharing to three minutes. Please keep your shares related to the step. If you feel like drinking or if you had a drink today, please see me or speak to someone after the meeting. We ask that you please refrain from the use of profanity. We are in a church and in a spiritual journey. Now I would like to open up the meeting.